The objective of this demonstration is review of the anatomic landmarks of the edentulous maxilla. This model is a positive replica of the edentulous maxilla. The colored portions of the model show the anatomic areas. The anatomic landmarks can be classified for study purpose into the limiting structures which border the anatomic area, the supporting structures and the relief structures. The limiting structures, the labial frenum, the labial vestibule of the sulcus, the buccal frenae, the buccal sulcus or the vestibule, the hamular notch and the posterior palatal seal area comprise of the limiting structures. The labial frenum. Labial frenum is a V-shaped fold of mucous membrane that is seen in the midline of the maxilla. This fold of mucous membrane divides the labial vestibule into the right and left halves. No muscle attachment is seen in this frenum. The buccal frenum. Buccal frenae can be single or double broad fan shaped folds seen in the lateral aspect of the maxilla. Buccal frenae can have muscle fiber attachments of the levator anguli oris, orbicularis oris and the buccinator muscles. The labial vestibule or the labial sulcus extends from the buccal frenum on one side to the buccal frenum on the other side. It is bound anteriorly and laterally by the upper lip in the medial aspect by the slopes of the residual alveolar ridge and posteriorly by the buccal frenum. The orbicularis oris muscles is the major muscle that has its presence in its area. The buccal vestibule. Buccal vestibule or the buccal sulcus is a depressed area on either side of the maxilla extending from the buccal frenum anteriorly to the hamular notch posteriorly. It is bound laterally by the cheek and medially by the lateral slopes of the residual alveolar ridge. The buccinator muscle, the mandibular position, ramus and the coronoid process of the mandible, alveolar ridge size affect the size of the buccal sulcus. Hamular notch. It's a depressed area seen on either side, bound anteriorly by the maxillary tuberosity, posteriorly by the hamulus of the median pterygoid plate, laterally by the buccal sulcus of the vestibule, and medially by the soft palate. This area has soft, loose areolar tissue beneath. The posterior palatal seal area. This is the anterior part of the soft palate. The supporting structures of the maxilla. The supporting structures of the maxilla include the residual maxillary ridge and the heart palate. The residual alveolar ridge of the maxilla. This is usually a U-shaped convex structure that is a remnant of the alveolar process which remains after the maxillary teeth are extracted. Anteriorly, it can be U, V or an ovoid shape. The posterior lateral slopes of this residual alveolar ridge act as primary stress bearing areas of the maxilla. The maxillary tuberosity. Maxillary tuberosity is a bulbous area which is seen in the distal aspect of the maxillary residual ridge. It can be a bony prominence, a fibrous area or both. The tuberosity is bound posteriorly by the hamular notch. It is the secondary stress bearing area of the maxilla. The heart palate. Heart palate is the concave part of the maxilla bound anteriorly and laterally by the residual alveolar ridge and posteriorly by the soft palate. In the anterior portion of the heart palate are present the rugae. Rugae are horizontal folds of fibrous soft tissue which extend laterally from the midline. The heart palate 
can be divided for study purpose into the anterior and the posterior parts. This is mainly because of the variation in the submucosa of these areas. The submucosa of the anterior heart palate is mainly formed by the adipose tissue whereas the submucosa of the posterior part of the heart palate is the glandular tissue. The horizontal part of the heart palate lateral to the midline is the stress bearing area of the maxilla. The rugae area of the anterior heart palate is the secondary stress bearing area of the maxilla. The relief areas of the maxilla. The incisive papilla in the anterior region, the mid palatine raphae in the midline and the fovea palatina at the posterior part are the relief areas of the maxilla. The incisive papilla. This is an elevation of soft tissue over the incisive foramen or the nasopalatine canal. This is a relief area as it prevents pressure being exerted on the nasopalatine nerve and vessels. The mid palatine raphae extending in the midline anteriorly from the incisive papilla posteriorly till the distal aspect of the heart palate. Mid palatine raphae is a area which is formed over the suture area of the palatal shelves of the maxilla during the developmental process. This has thin mucosa covering it and very little submucosa. To prevent any trauma to this area, relief is provided in this area. The fovea palatina. Fovea palatina are two depressions that are seen in the soft tissue of the heart palate, 1 to 1.5 mm anterior to the junction of the heart and the soft palate. Fovea palatina are representations of the ducts of the mucous glands in that area. 